so we start with the peristernal long axis view. In case of the peristernal long axis view, we start at the clavicular, go down intercostal spaces until we arrive at the third or fourth intercostal space. The marker is located to the right shoulder of the patient and that's the first view we get. We see the peristernal long axis view and below we have a little bit of space where we can differentiate pearl effusion. Then we go a little bit more towards the anatomical structures. There was just the descending aorta, that's the pericardium. And in this area, we would see pericardial effusion or below pleurifusion. That's the left atrium, the left ventricle. Here, the aortic valve in the center of the image. Here, the right coronary cusp. And if you go a little bit more to the right in the image, that's the aorta ascendant. This is the mitral valve, the papillary muscles. Now we go a little bit into detail of the structures. What we here see initially is the right ventricle, the interventricular septum, the infralateral wall. We save this image and then we tilt the transducer or we move probably one intercostal space upwards to visualize the ascending aorta even more clear. Here it is seen on the uh, model and on the knobs you have to use, always adapt the depth and the gain settings and try to create an optimal image. As seen in this example, you can make the sector very narrow, which results in a very good frame rate, but it's not always optimal. So you should have the sector so that you see the entire anatomy you want to see. You can also activate or deactivate a feature called the virtual apex. That's the virtual apex. So you have less near field artifacts. You see now the inflow view of the right ventricle, you also can tilt the beam where you want to scan that and feature of the machine to optimize your imaging in the center of your imaging. You also can adapt the color Doppler and the region of interest there. The broader it is, the less frame rate you will have, but the more information you will get, but keep it as slim as possible. Tilting the transducer upwards will result in a view of the pulmonary artery and the pulmonic trunk and the RVOT and the pulmonic valve in the center of the image now. You can uh, visualize it quite nicely over here. What you also can do is activate the pulse wave Doppler with the help of the pulse wave Doppler. You see the outflow of the right ventricle and you can measure several measurements here. For example, one measurement would be the pulmonic acceleration time. So what is the time? It's the time from the beginning till the maximum velocity, which denotes a certain time interval. If it is longer than 120 milliseconds, it's definitely normal. As you see over here, that's the measurement. It's 143 milliseconds, so entirely normal. Then you can also measure the curve. You can try an automatic measurement, which works in this case very nicely. Going back to tilting the transducer downwards, you see the right ventricle and you can start uh, adding the color Doppler, you see the right ventricle in the top of the screen, the right atrium at the bottom of the screen, and you can activate the continuous wave Doppler where you can measure tricuspid regurgitation. As it doesn't have large tricuspid regurgitation, you cannot measure it here. Now we want to start with the M mode. The M mode can be used on several planes in the personal long axis. This is the view of the mitral valve. We also can take a look at the aortic valve and visualize the aortic box in the peristernal long axis view as well. Saving all those images, continuing with color Doppler on the aortic valve and the mitral valve, you always should use the color Doppler on both valves individually and also on the tricuspid and the pulmonic valve. Also save the images and continuing with the peristernal long axis view, you also can zoom in towards the aortic valve to visualize the valve in great detail. What you can see is that there is no anatomical variant, at least not in the personal long axis present. We can also do that with the mitral valve and focus our view on the mitral valve, the anterior mitral valve leaflet upwards and the posterior downwards in the screen. And you can also add color Doppler in this setting after saving the image and you can see where uh, regurgitation by tilting the transducer might be located.
From the peristernal long axis view, we now go to the peristernal short axis view. This is achieved by rotating the transducer. You see immediately that it's the short axis. We take a look at this again on the transducer. So you have the marker to the right shoulder and the peristernal long axis view. You rotate while seeing the aortic valve to the left shoulder of the patient. And then you achieve a peristernal short axis view at the level of the aortic valve. That's Nicely visualized in the center, you can add color Doppler to see if there's a regurgitation present, um, especially denote the color M modes. You could also see a regurgitation if it would be relevant in this view. Just be sure that the color M mode is located across the aortic valve. If you don't see relevant uh, regurgitation, you also should take a look at the morphology and the right ventricular outflow tract in the later stages so you can measure above and below the pulmonic valve and also the pulmonic trunk. If you did that, you also should focus on the pulmonary arteries. Below in the image, you see the right pulmonary artery quite nicely. Here's the right pulmonary artery. This is the left pulmonary artery, but of the left, you only get the glimpse. Here you see the RVOT and here the tricuspid valve, the intatrial septum, and also add the color Doppler to the tricuspid valve to see if there is regurgitation present. You see that there is flow inwards, the right atrium, that's the inferior vena cava. And you can also denote that flow is going towards the interatrial septum, but there is no turbulent flow. Now again, we take a look at the aortic valve and see that there are three cusps, the right coronary cusp, left coronary cusp and the A coronary cusp. And this looks like a Mercedes star. Going downwards or tilting downwards, you see that the, the image changes and what you see is the personal short axis view on the level of the mitral valve. You can also add color Doppler and you will see that there is no real regurgitation present across the mitral valve. Also save this image. And when you continue to evaluate the entire mitral valve, which is very important, you see that there is no real regurgitation. If you tilt the transducer more downwards, you see that there is the radial function of the left ventricle. So you basically can evaluate the basal segments until the apical segments of the left ventricle in this one view and evaluate radial function. You also see the two papillary muscles. And here we are already almost at the apex. So we go again in the peristernal long axis view. We first oriented the marker towards the right shoulder and we have the heart in the center of the image. And now we adapt the peristernal long axis and move it a bit towards the left atrium and we save the image. What we can see if uh, we apply color Doppler are two structures entering the left atrium, which are the pulmonic veins. You can see them over here entering the left atrium. So it's even possible in the personal long axis to display the pulmonic veins. To continue in the personal long axis, we can move intercostal spaces up and down. Depending on what we do, we can either see the apex if we move downwards and so if we move upwards and tilt the transducer downwards, we can see the right ventricular inflow view with the right atrium and the right ventricle. In detail, we can differentiate, uh, differentiate here the IVC um, entering here in the right atrium and here the coronary sinus. We can also apply color Doppler to see if there is tricuspid regurgitation, as well as we can denote the inflow of the inferior vena cava and the coronary sinus. So in this next demonstration, we are going to take a look at the four chamber view, the apical four chamber view. The marker is pointing laterally, so to the left side of the patient. And we are trying to display a nice apical four chamber view. Always uh, be aware to not be too foreshortened. 
So we we'll try to find the true apex. First of all, we see in the center the interventricular septum. This is the lateral wall of the left ventricle. Here the mitral valve and the entire left atrium displayed. We do see pulmonic veins, the left pulmonic veins, the left upper and the left lower. Here the right upper pulmonic vein, which also can be used for measurements. Here, if we apply color Doppler, we see nicely the blood entering the left atrium coming from the lungs or the, from the pulmonic veins. And we can display a signal which has two peaks, a diastolic and a systolic peak. We can differentiate quite nicely in this subject. Overall, it's not always that easy to display this signal and to measure it properly. So what you should try is to find the right upper pulmonary vein because they have the best Doppler alignment. But very often it won't be possible. If it is possible, we can use it to grade diastolic dysfunction or it helps us to grade diastolic dysfunction. Click the link in the box to get to know more about it. The next thing we are going to display is the inflow of the left ventricle with blood. You can see it here displayed with color Doppler. In color Doppler, you see some kind of turbulent flow. And here we have the color M mode. So additionally to the color Doppler, we activate the M mode. And with the combination of those two modalities, we can display the mitral valve inflow. It is very important to align the signal optimally to display optimally the inflow, so the true inflow of the left ventricle, which won't be always possible. But this measurement also can help us to grade diastolic uh, dysfunction even more or more accurate and even to calculate uh, feeling pressures. Here we have a nice signal and you see this blue flame becoming yellow and red. And what we can measure is from the basis of the inflow signal to approximately 50 centimeters into the left ventricle and there we get the time. So what you can see is there is a time displayed which is in this specific situation entirely normal. To continue, we again try to visualize the blood flow into the left ventricle and adjust the signal a bit. But as you can see, it's not always an easy measurement and it has a lot of pitfalls. To continue with our assessment, we can also try and find a tricuspid regurgitation in this patient. He has a very small jet which displays the tricuspid regurgitation, so that's absolutely physiological. Now we can activate tissue Doppler. Tissue Doppler is displaying the movement of the tissue. And in this case, we can place the tissue Doppler in the annulus of the tricuspid valve in the lateral annulus, and we can measure the excursion, the so-called S prime. And in his case, it's normal, it's about 0.14 meters per second or 14 centimeters per second, which is normal. The next measurement we can do for the right ventricle is the so-called TAPSI, the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. For this TAPSI, you have to use the M mode and position it in the lateral tricuspid annulus and measure the excursion of the tricuspid annulus, which is also normal. In this patient, you can see that the right ventricle is contracting normally. There's also on the left side an M mode measurement, so a measurement of the left ventricle. It's the MAPSI, the mitral annular plane systolic excursion. And also this excursion looks pretty normal. So the normal values of the MAPSI are in between 10 to 11 millimeters, the TAPSI 17 millimeters, and the S prime uh, is normal when it is above 9.5 centimeters per second. Now to continue, we use the pulse wave Doppler and place it across the mitral valve and we see a rather large E and a small A wave in this individual. So the next views we are going to acquire are the subcoastal views. There is not only one view as you might know, uh, there are several views and we start with the subcoastal four chamber view. What we have to do first is we have to use more depth. It's approximately in the range of 20 centimeters. As you can see on the left lower uh, range of the screen, we always need enough depth to really visualize the entire heart and the entire pericardium. So we grab the transducer from above and try to visualize the heart optimally. We can also broaden the sector a little bit and then we can try to get additional views. So the first view is just a normal plane towards the heart. And as we rotate the transducer, first the marker pointing to the 
left side of the patient, so away from us. If you rotate the transducer to a short axis view, as we would know it from the peristernal view, we can also acquire the aortic valve in a short axis in a subcoastal approach. If we use color Doppler here, we can visualize the IVC as well as parts of the SVC, so the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. We can display here the pulmonic trunk, which gives us actually a nice view of the pulmonic trunk. So as you might recall from the compact echo course, here you can also display these views from a subcoastal approach. If we rotate the transducer more towards the head, we can see the IVC and the entering of the IVC to the right atrium. And here we again can try to locate the SVC as well. It's not always that simple, but normally the SVC is a continuation of the IVC. So you can try to achieve this view from a subcoastal approach. To measure the IVC, we have several options. First, we can just do it in a B mode image. We can also use the M mode. And in M mode, it's displayed how the IVC changes over time in regards to respiration. So if he breathes, then we see a movement. If he doesn't breathe, we don't see. We can also adjust the depth to visualize the IVC even closer. And we see the IVC on the M mode is this dark line in the center. Now, as he's breathing, there is a motion of the IVC, which is absolutely normal. So it should collapse a little bit during inspiration. As he's a young, healthy individual, the IVC looks rather prominent. If you then rotate or move the transducer towards the other side, so it's not a rotation. So from the IVC, which is located in the right side of the body to the aorta, we can visualize the mesenteric artery, the superior mesenteric artery and the celiac trunk as well in this view from a subcoastal approach. Always keep in mind to adjust the depth so that you're optimally located towards the heart and then also try to rotate the transducer even more. Then you have a view which almost looks like a peristernal long axis view as seen over here. This is the aortic valve. This is the left ventricle, the right ventricle. So you can even differentiate those views from a peristernal, uh, from a subcoastal approach.